What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. First off, I just wanna say Happy New Year. Happy 2024. I hope everybody is doing well and looking forward to the new year. If you've been here before, welcome back. If it's your first time, thanks for tuning in and checking out the channel. I really do appreciate it. With that being said, if you haven't already, go ahead down below, hit that like button, hit the notification bell so you can see when I post. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It means the absolute world to me. Now, for today's video, as it is January of 2024, I thought it would be very fitting to make a video talking about cars that I wanna see more in 2024 and I think people should get into. So today I've prepared a list of five cars that I would personally like to see driven, modified, going into 2024, whether it's on the street or going into car shows and seeing them. Before I continue, I would just like to say before I start this list, this list is entirely made up of my opinion. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion. You can agree with this list, you can disagree with this list, that is entirely up to you. All I ask is that you just respect my opinion and have some fun with this video. It's supposed to be a fun little video. Now with that out of the way, it's freezing, it's cold, there's snow all over the place in Tennessee. It's making things very difficult. Let's get started with today's video. So I think it's pretty safe to say that over the last five to 10 years, the reigning champs in the car scene have pretty much been the 350Z, Mazda Miata, Skylines, um, the S chassis, 240s, S13s, S14s, pretty much been owned by everyone, driven, and you see them all over the car scene. However, that's not what I'm gonna talk about going into 2024 that I would like to see. I'm gonna talk about some other cars, some new, some old, and we'll just get into it. All right, kicking off this list in the number five spot is the brand new 2024 S650 Mustang, specifically the GT or the Dark Horse. Yes, I'm aware the Mustang is very, very popular and it's a staple in the car scene and it's probably not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm aware that it is still popular among the other ones that I listed earlier that are very popular. However, I think the new one deserves a spot on this list, maybe just not as high as some of the other ones that I'm going to list. So I've gotten to see a, quite a handful of the new Mustangs and I think they knocked it out of the park with the new appearance of the S650. Now, in my opinion, I think it is similar to what Nissan did with the new Z, how they took bits and pieces over the years and kind of made it, made a baby with it, and then thus we have the new Z. I think Ford did something very similar with the new Mustang. The front end profile is very new to the Mustang. We've never really seen a front end like this before. New hood more angrier headlights, aggressive front grille. It's just all kind of new to the Mustang. The rear, however, I feel like I'm looking at a 65 Fastback. All of the Mustangs, besides the convertible EcoBoost, has a new Fastback design in the rear, which gives the 65 profile, in my opinion. The rear end has a new spoiler on the GTs and still sticking with the iconic three bar taillights. The side profile, however, I feel like I'm looking at last year's, the S550 side profile. And I feel like they've just taken bits and pieces of the Mustangs over the years and then made a baby with it. And thus we have the S650. I think they're super sick. I think they did great with the aesthetic styling. The power is really good. And I would love to see a lot more people get them, buy them, and hop into them going into 2024. And if that's not enough to convince you, look into the dark horse. The Dark Horse has a handbrake in it that was specifically designed for the track and drifting. So you can pretty much drive from the dealership and take it to the track and drift on it. The handbrake was specifically designed and fine-tuned by Chelsea Denova. If you didn't know, Formula Drift Driver, Pennzoil, drives a Mustang on the drift track. He won last year, I'm pretty sure. He fine-tuned this handbrake so you can put it exactly where it needs to go when you're in the turn. And I think that's super sick. So I definitely think the new S650 Mustang line, yes, even the EcoBoost deserves a spot on this list. Now, I forgot to mention before I continue with this list that this list is based on cars that I have seen in Tennessee, in my area. Some other communities all over the states may have seen double what I have seen of these cars and sees them all the time and I might not know. I'm just going off of cars that I've seen at car shows around me, on the streets, driving around, that kind of thing. So that's what this list is kind of going off of that I would like to see more of. You guys may see these cars all the time, who knows? Going in the number four spot of this list 
is a little coupe from Japan that slowly last year has come to popularity. And I've seen a bunch of them on the streets and in the show. Um, however, I would like to see a ton more of them in my opinion. And I'm of course talking about the new Toyota GR86. I think they killed it with the appearance. They gave it, in my opinion, a much needed update from its predecessor. And yes, I know the FRS BRZ86 is very, very popular. They are all over the place. You can drive down the street and you can see 10 of them on your way home. They're all over the place. And I, I get it, I get it. They're cheap. You can get a manual, rear wheel drive, you can go drift them. Huge variety of aftermarket support. And it seems to be just a never ending list of parts and modifications that you can do to these cars. And I understand they're just a good car to just hop into. I understand. However, I am just kind of sick, in my opinion, of seeing them. They've become, in my opinion, kind of like a copy paste cookie cutter car. And I mean, look at Slam Enough Gatlinburg over the past couple of years. There's been like 15 BRZ FRS 86s in the showcase. They're all over the place. And I would just like to see a little bit more of the new generation going into 2024. Going on the number three spot on this list is a car that I actually think is pretty great and I'm sure other people do as well. Yet I've only seen like a handful of them. And part of that is because it's pretty ugly, not gonna lie, it's pretty ugly. And of course I'm referring to the G80 from BMW, the G80 series. When it came out, everybody was like, what is that? What? What is that grill? It's huge, it's massive. Guys, I get it. The, the grill is massive, it is huge. Pretty soon BMW is just gonna be a grill on four wheels and that's gonna be their brand motive. However, if you can get past the front end grill and look at the car as a whole, if you have to cover the grill with your thumb as you're looking at the car and you see a very nicely designed car with some pretty impressive numbers if you do some research and look at it. Looks really, really good, especially when it's modified. Just look at this one. Look at it. It's beautiful. I would love to see more of these modified going into 2024. Who's with me? Now, the number two car on this list may actually get some hate, but I'm okay with that. I like the car. Number two on this list is the 2023-2024 Acura Integra Type S. Now, when Acura announced that they were bringing back the Integra, but only as a sedan, Integra people were not very happy. A lot of people were like, it just looks like an Accord with makeup. Where's the coupe? What's wrong with you? I'm not buying this. I would buy an Accord over this. And people just kind of hated on it. I like this car, actually. I think they look really, really good. Yes, I would like to see a coupe. They did a Honda Accord Coupe V6, which was manual back in the day. I think they could do that again with the Integra, maybe release a variation. Um, but as far as I know, they're not planning on doing that right now. I think it would look really good though. The front end is super aggressive with a hood scoop in the middle and the front end just looks so angry and aggressive and I love it. The rear end, yes, is basically Microsoft copy pasted from a Genesis Coupe with those tail lights, but I also love the triple exhaust. I like the Integra Type S, six speed manual, turbocharged. It's got a decent little bit of power and I just think it looks really good. I haven't seen a single one of these base model or the Type S modified at all. I haven't seen a single one. That might depend on my area and your area. You might see a ton of them, but I would like to see more or any of them going into 2024 in the shows, on the streets, modified, anywhere. I would love to see them going into 2024. One more personal honorable mention that I want to throw in this list is the manual Supra, not the Mark IV, the Mark V Supra. When it was first released, nobody was really happy that the Supra was coming out only automatic. And a lot of people were angry when they had just bought an automatic and then the Z came out and it was manual. And then after they announced of the Z, they decided to make a manual Supra. I have never, ever, ever seen a manual Supra A90, A91 in person, and I would really like to see one. Maybe I just haven't looked close enough looking into windows, but I've never seen a manual one in person. And I know they're ridiculously marked up and they're like 70 grand because just because of the manual sticker price and dealerships are, they're honestly just hard to get in general for dealerships. So I would just really like to see a lot more of them 
going into 2024. And now in the number one spot on this list is of course the 2004 Toyota Echo. I'm just kidding guys. The number one spot on this list actually goes to the Toyota Altezza. Now this may seem like an odd choice. Why did you pick this car? You drive one every day. They're all over the place. You see them every day. That's not correct. You see IS300s every single day. I have never, ever, ever seen a Toyota Altezza here in the States. Now, you might have, depending on where you live, but here in this area, they are all IS300s or the Sport Crosses, or yes, the manual ones, but there are no Altezzas. I've never seen an Altezza at a show, on the street, whatever and I would really, really like to see one going into 2024. Now, the biggest differences between the Altezza and the IS200 here in the States, of course, one is right-hand drive, one is left-hand drive, one is Lexus, one is Toyota, one is from Japan, one is from the States here. Biggest difference is the engine. Here, it's the 2JZ 3-liter straight six GE engine, no turbo. In Japan, it's a four-cylinder turbo beams engine with a 50-50 weight distribution. The IS300 is very heavy in the front. Those are some bigger differences in the two. And also, if I'm not mistaken, the Altezza is always manual over there. That's just how they do it in Japan. Pretty much all manual. Over here, you have to struggle and find a manual IS300 or swap it because people sell them for 20 grand for a 250,000 mile car from 2004 with a manual transmission in it. You don't have to struggle with that. You just find one, import it, you have a four cylinder turbo, 50 50 weight distribution, manual, right hand drive, Lexus S200, but it's a Toyota Altezza. I've never seen one, and I would really like to see one going into 2024. And there you have it, guys. There were five cars that I think people should get into going into 2024. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with this list, disagree. What would you like to see going into 2024? You can talk about cars, mods, mods you think are going away mods you think are coming back, anything like that. Just leave a comment down below. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit the notification bell so you can see when I post. And guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.